Hey everybody, it's Taki117 back with Taki Space Program. Here we are sitting on the pad of a very old rocket. This one has been in construction for quite some time simply because other missions have kind of taken priority. Um, but its destination is the moon. Launching in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four, three, two, one. Mission and liftoff. This is a very slow moving rocket, not because the payload is heavy, but because there's so much atmospheric pressure. These engines just can't produce a whole lot of thrust. At least not when they're low to the ground like they are. Roll out. As you can see, we've got a ton of Delta V here. Absolutely massive amount. Five hundred meters, Mach point one five. So this one might take a while to get to orbit. Yeah, this rocket uses older parts, and they're parts that I've used on other rockets, but I've had them for quite a while. guidance computer take over here. Pitch about down about three degrees. Uh, make it two degrees. Yeah, that's plenty of pitching. And the rocket has broken up. Wonderful. I knew I should have. Anyway. This was supposed to be a. my first lunar lander. Let's see here. very tiny um, designed specifically to land well on the moon so it's got you know some science equipment it's got solar panels for power and I should have just taken manual control I really should have so I'm just going to have to rebuild this rocket. Unfortunately. Um, let's point up. Up is good. I am quickly running out of electric charge. We're quickly running out of monopropellant. Why are we running out of monopropellant? Oh. That's why. So I was burning my engine. Because so I forgot that. So I need to bring up my surface information. Let's 
see my suicide burn count down there. So now I should be able to point surface negative. It'll be alright. So I am going to try to save this lander. Now whether I succeed or not remains to be seen. But if nothing else, I will rebuild this rocket. And Maybe add something a little more powerful. Like I said, it's, it's an older design. Nine seconds to suicide burn. Now, of course, I can't see where I'm coming down. Point up. Let's point up. And there we go, I have successfully saved it. Uh, looks like I lost a couple solar panels and a science instrument, but hey, whatever works. I'm going to take a surface sample, I'm going to take a crew report. No, I guess I don't need either of those. Need the Geiger counter either. Nope. Okay. But I can can recover this excuse me this craft and reuse it. So I now know I'm gonna have to fly this rocket manual. Like I said, I've been working on that one for quite a while. So I had actually forgotten if I needed to fly it manually or not. Turns out I do. But that's uh, it's not a problem. I have plenty of funds. I did some um, science spending. I did have enough to unlock the other science node down here, the efficient electronics. So I have you know lots of communication systems now and whatnot. Completed a couple of uh, tourist contracts and, you know, science from contracts. Those are easy. Um, for the science from contracts, you don't actually need to get any science from them. So you, if you have, you know, a science satellite in orbit already, with, or a satellite with a uh, science experiment on it, you can run that again and just transmit the science to complete the contract. They don't require, you know, a new satellite every time. Which is nice. So, here's our rocket. Uh, unfortunately, this will only take about a day. 
So we're just gonna go ahead and build it. Um, like I said, the thrust is a little weaker than I would like, but it works. And we are just gonna kinda hope for the best, really. I mean, once it gets going, once I drop those boosters, it should be alright. Um, the main issue is, of course, getting to orbit. Once I'm in orbit, everything should be fine. So it's gonna take some time to recondition the launch pad and just have to rebuild this probe. Um, I also figured out that the transfer window for Venus, the Earth Venus transfer window is 114 days away. Well, it's 115 days, but I have it set for a 24 hour window just so that I don't have to worry about timing because I can leave my satellite in orbit for a day. You know, and that'll give it time to adjust and whatnot. So I'm going to roll this out and try again. Now, the main concern with this satellite is it doesn't have movable solar panels. The solar panels that are on it are static. Meaning they can't track the sun, which means the whole ship has to move to track the sun. Which is going to get interesting on a lunar journey. So, what I'm actually going to do is shut down or turn off the battery in the probe core so that you know, in the event of emergency I can turn that back on. I have just a little bit of power to orient my probe so that those solar panels can recharge the batteries. Now of course this isn't as big of an issue on you know the surface of the the uh, surface of the moon. Uh, here it is, the landing probe. I want to lock. So here we go. We are, of course, going to set our moon as the target. And close that and open up our orbit info. So we have the relative inclination. We're going to time warp that down to less than a degree. 22 degrees. Alright, we're going to go around again. Because I missed it. So, these things happen. You know, NASA does this all the time. They'll sit a rocket on the pad for a while. It might perform a uh, static test. I've learned that lunar launches are almost always going to be night launches. At least for now. Um, there might come a point in you know, the year as the Earth is going around the sun where the Earth lines up so that, you know, you have a daytime launch. But for the most part, lunar launches are going to be night launches. There we go. Okay. Let's try this again. This time... I am going to be flying manually. Slowly rising into the air. Roll. There we go. Now, the main reason this is has aerodynamic issues is this fairing up here. Um, you'll notice it actually is rather short 
but it goes out beyond the width of the rocket and comes back. And it flares out and then comes back down into the rocket size. And that's kind of a problem. Fifty meters a second, point one six. Still doing good. Eighty meters a second. Okay. One point two kilometers. Start our gravity turn. This is very touch and go. You can see down in the lower left hand corner there my control inputs. And I'm just having to fight this thing. And there it goes again. Okay, I'm going to have to completely redesign this rocket. stage through our stack here. Separate that. Separate that. Point surface negative. Since I'm not actually not using my battery. So what I'm looking at as far as my surface info is concerned doesn't help is my suicide burn countdown and my true altitude. My true altitude is my altitude above the ocean. So I am going to have to redesign at least the lifting rocket, which means this is probably going to get my standard heavy moon lifter, which it really doesn't need. does not need that two and a half meter rocket. Fortunately this uh, small lander does have dot down to 75 percent here. Yep, we're good. Fortunately this lander does have its own fuel supply and a thrust to weight ratio greater than one on the surface of the earth. I want to keep the suicide burn counter as close to zero as I can. Well, it landed. Destroyed everything above the actual probe, but it landed. I'm gonna get some uh, temperature readings from. Nope, nope, okay. So, uh, looks like this is going to get our standard lunar rocket. Or, or rather, a standard lunar, yeah, lunar rocket. Standard lunar transport vehicle. There we go which is a two and a half meter rocket but this thing doesn't need it so, so we're gonna try one more time to get into orbit and if we're lucky hopefully we can uh, make our transfer but we should be I mean to be honest, this was, this was an untested rocket design. I had not flown it before, and it had been a while since I simulated it. So I'm not surprised that it failed. I'm a little disappointed that it failed, but I'm not surprised. Uh, so we're basically just going to pull everything from there away. 
put it on top of a Titan rocket with a two and a half meter fairing. I actually want to use. Hmm. And all these parts. And they are under structural, I bet. Yep, they're there. See, and this has a <laughs> thrust to weight ratio of almost two. Like, this probe does not need this rocket at all. That's too small. And this is just going to look downright ridiculous. I mean, look at that. That is a huge fairing and just a massive rocket for a tiny little probe. And you don't need that, really. There you go. Build it. It's going to be another day, a couple days. Where everything is in the right orientation. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. And again, we have to recondition the launch pad. The good news is we can recondition the launch pad and build the rocket at the same time. So we're not having to worry about, you know, conditioning and then starting construction. Uh, I also uh, started a runway upgrade. This is, I'm currently on the tier 2 runway. Getting ready to do the uh, tier three runway, the final tier, right there. Now this is a perfectly smooth surface, unlike tier one and two, which have potholes in it. Which means my takeoffs and landings will be much easier. This one also has lights, unlike the tier one and two. So I, when I'm falling from the sky, I can actually see where I'm going to hit the ground. Um, unfortunately, that does provide some additional challenges because the lights at the end of the runway, at the very end, have collision meshes. <laughs> what that means is if you run into them, you're going to destroy your aircraft instead of passing right through them like you do the lights on the side, which don't actually exist. So, here we go. Um, I am going to throttle this main engine down quite a bit because um, you know I'm launching it a thrust to weight ratio of 1.73 my normal launch thrust to weight ratio is like 1.2 yeah so I'm launching at a 1.7 thrust to weight ratio so I'm actually just going to throttle my orbit information here. I'm going to throttle this back. Oh, 75% works. I like 75%. It's 1.27. It's still a little high, but we are once again going to warp until this drops down to less than a degree... yeah, two, two and a half degrees is fine. I don't feel like waiting another orbit. But that's why, you know, this is the reason you see so many 
repeated rocket designs is they're reliable you know you know what they're gonna do you know their capabilities there's not a whole lot of guesswork you know, you know if you put a payload on there and send it to orbit it's going to reach orbit it's gonna be a stable orbit and there's not gonna be a whole lot of problems this one I know I can tip 10 degrees off off uh, you know off vertical and be perfectly fine now I can pitch three degrees down from launch angle or from prograde and be perfectly fine is probably a little much. Yeah, we'll go two. You know, I know the limits of this rocket, whereas the other rocket, as I mentioned before, is largely untested. It was largely, you know, experimental. I'd never flown it before, and I'm probably never going to fly it again. It's just that unreliable. This is a thing of beauty. I mean, just look at it. Let's see if I can yaw a couple degrees. Oh, wrong way. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm adjusting my orbit to decrease my relative inclination. Probably not going to go all the way down to zero, and that's fine. But I do want it to get to about 0.26 where it was, or where it's supposed to be for launch. like 4 and 9 is about all I'm going to get out of it which is fine so because I was a little more aggressive with my gravity turn this is actually shaping up to be a really beautiful launch you got the Milky Way back there you got the plume expanding due to decreased atmospheric pressure uh, looks like my fairing is heating up a little bit Let's do orbit prograde. There we go. It falls away. I already see it heating up. And I'm going to put this in 150 kilometer orbit. It doesn't need to be any higher. I don't want it any faster really or I don't really want it any higher so I'm, again I overshot just a little bit because of atmospheric drag so we're going to just coast I am going to turn off let's see I'm going to transfer in and then lock the uh, landing probe there just so I have that little bit of reserve battery just in case. I should have plenty of battery to make an orbit. Alright, let's ditch this fairing. There you go. <laughs> this just looks ridiculous. You know, here's this tiny little lander on this giant fuel tank rocket engine combination. And it's ridiculous. Alright, so we are going to circularize an apoapsis and we are going to create and execute that node. And I have plenty of electric charge. I have 275. I'm not using any of it really. 
Hopefully that's enough to get me to the moon. Um, and again, I do have these solar panels here to sort of augment them, or augment that. Uh, Venus there, you got Saturn up there. Two, one, there, there we go. It's getting into a circular orbit here, and as you can see, I have plenty of delta V. Engine shut down. All right. So let's warp around the planet a bit. There we go. So that's all for this episode. Next episode, we are going to perform our transfer and hopefully land on the moon. So until next time, I'm Taki117, and remember, it's only rocket science. <laughs>